Caddis Maximus here once again. No, I haven't gone away yet. This time I'm reviewing the Black & Decker RTX, the model RTX 3S. They actually do sell this still online, although this is surprisingly a 2007 unit. It works great. Now I'm doing the review of this Black & Decker Dremel, or compact die grinder, rotary tool, uh, primarily for a couple of reasons, really. Uh, because it's part of my Dremel series, and I'm not just going to review only Dremels, but, you know, this Black & Decker, as well as a cheaper knockoff one, just for comparison purposes. Also, later on, I'm going to take all the Dremels and really uh, do, like, a power test and kind of compare the history of Dremel, Dremels against a couple of the other competing units. That's why I'm not doing a bunch of, like, cutoff and power tests with each individual unit because it's excessively redundant. These are kind of bench reviews of each of these, and I'm going to do, like, a review and comparison where I really show the performance and how some of them are similar and some of the advantages and disadvantages and that kind of stuff when I do uh, a power test comparison. And also, it's, it's easier to get a perspective instead of having, you know, several videos about different Dremel tools and cutting off nails. Uh, with each individual one and an individual video, it's much easier for people to get a grasp of them if I take uh, five different Dremels and cut off the same nail all in a row with the different tools. Just so you can see how they bog down and how smoothly they run. Anyway, what prompted me to really do this video next was a couple of comments. One was a comment, I mean, one was the, generally the issue with many rotary tools where they have a, a button up here to lock the spindle so you can tighten and loosen the chuck. That also ends up being the Achilles heel many Dremel brand, or as far as I know, all Dremel brand products, and many similar kind of knockoff products, as well as remanufactured or rebranded ones such as Craftsman's, which are just Dremel tools with a different label on them, uh, is the fact that as you're using it, you aren't always paying attention. You're trying to do your carving or your cutoff work, and you're using it, and you're turning the tool, maybe switching hands, and you bump that little button, which is the spindle lock while it's running, and it can just ruin it. It can either snap the spindle at the least. What it does is it breaks off the little pin that's inside so your little locking button doesn't work anymore. Another user had commented uh, about the cordless lithium-ion Dremel tool where it still works, but they had somehow accidentally had the button press when they turned it on, and it blew out the electronic speed controller. So I'm bringing up this Black & Decker because it's actually not such a bad product considering it's just a rotary tool and they're a much easier product to make pretty well. But th this has a couple of features or a distinct feature that prevents those kind of issues from happening. And some other people may have more success with this unit than they do with Dremels because of that. This is a permanent magnet DC motor based unit versus just using a standard universal motor. The difference is, is that the outside of the motor has permanent magnets rather than just another coil of wire. And really, that's not so bad. It seems that it has just as much power uh, and about the same weight. Maybe a little bit less RPM, but in small rotary tools using uh, permanent magnet motors uh, versus using universal motors, you get a little bit more speed out of the universal, but as far as power and I think, I believe longevity, uh, they do pretty well. Now, one thing on the Dremels is you can replace the brushes, where on this unit you can't because the motor is what is, what is known as a canned motor, is a permanently uh, assembled motor. So this, uh, unfortunately, when the brushes wear out, you're pretty much uh, stuck. Even if you could replace the brushes, physically get into the can motor. Many times the commutator is only thick enough to really last through one set of brushes. So that is one aspect that makes it a little cheaper than the Dremel. The Dremel's motor is designed to give you more years of use. But this RTX can be had for like $20 or $30 online. So it is pretty cheap and it really is competitive in most other departments. I forgot to mention in the previous Dremel review, but all Dremels have pretty, or rotary tools have pretty tight spindles. And this Black & Decker, uh, even though it does use bronze bushings instead of rolling ball bearings in the motor, it still runs pretty smooth. They do use a sealed ball bearing right here at the nose. And we can really see because this spindle on this Black & Decker is really nice and tight. No lateral play and it doesn't pull in and out. That's a hallmark of any you know usable rotary tool. If you can grab the spindle and it wobbles back and forth, or you can pull it in and out, don't buy it. It's just gonna end up vibrating and uh, just being a hassle and not give you as uh, reliable or smooth an operation. 
Now, what really sets this apart and what I wish uh, other manufacturers would do is something to prevent those kind of issues where you accidentally hit the spindle lock or it's hit when you're turning on the tool. What Black & Decker has done is I thought was pretty genius here. And what that is, is that they have a flip switch that locks the spindle. And this is a guarded switch. It's very interesting. So when you turn on the tool and you're running the tool, the power switch is right up here. So for some people that may be a little annoying because they're using it and they bump, might bump it on and off. But the advantage is, is the power switch actually locks into, excuse me, the spindle lock switch. And so when your tool is on and running, you cannot pull up that spindle lock lever. You cannot accidentally lock the spindle while the tool is running. So that is an advantage. And another advantage is that when you have the spindle locked, like in that one commenter who uh, damaged the speed controller on their cordless Dremel, when you have the spindle lock up, it blocks the power switch. So you cannot physically turn it on when the spindle is in the locked position, I thought that's real intelligent and actually ha uh, helps a lot with the overall reliability of the tool. Now, as far as other features, they have a nice strain release. They have real thick rubber over molding, especially down here. I really like that. They have really nice texturing on it and they have a, a pretty narrow grip. Some people don't like where the grip comes up like this and they kind of like the traditional rem Dremel where it's all the way, it's just circular all the way around. But this really isn't so bad and you really, it does work well. The little di fake diamond plating uh, allows you to hold it uh, quite easily and quite comfortably and I did appreciate that. It has the normal hanging hook here. Another thing that was very intelligent about Black & Decker is Dremel has been a standard for so long that other manufacturers have realized that if you're going to make a rotary tool, it needs to be compatible with Dremel parts. Otherwise, uh, nobody will buy it. Uh, people will just buy it and then realize they can't use any of the million Dremel accessories that are sold everywhere and just toss the thing. And so Black & Decker did wisen up to that. First thing is the threaded accessories. They use the same diameter and the same pitch thread. So we can use, say, this Craftsman little routing attachment, which is, you know, made by Dremel. And this thing will actually thread on here, just like it's any other Dremel tool, nice and tight. So I thought, mm, that is quite intelligent. The second thing that I thought was particularly intelligent, and we'll screw this back on, was that the spindle size and the spindle thread is exactly the same as the Dremel. Since the patents on the Dremel have all run out, it's easy for manufacturers just to make a copy. And we can pull this, the chuck off here, and we can put on, say, an actual Dremel brand, three-jaw chuck, if I can get it started, it's fine thread. And we can see that standard accessories like the three-jaw the three chuck fits. And more importantly for me, the little uh, square drive nut for driving things like snakes and other accessories also threads onto the Black & Decker spindle. So what is nice is if you have a Dremel, and that has broken or given you some issues, but you may have built up some accessories, you can buy this unit and just directly use it with all those accessories that you may already own. And let me zoom out a little bit here. That includes Black & Decker's old stuff too. What I have here is an old Black & Decker uh, wizard. This is the little rotary wand. And this screws on and is compatible. The little square drive on the, uh, the drive spring is compatible with the Dremel part. And of course, this unit will screw right onto this Black & Decker, even though one's a much, much older unit, probably from the 80s or the 90s. But this thing still is absolutely compatible with this unit, and I really did appreciate that. So you don't have to worry about uh, that type of situation. As far as this old wizard wand, it actually is just as flexible as any Dremel one, and it has ball bearings in it, and its spindle is still nice and tight, even though this thing's like 20 years old. I really have liked that uh, flexible cable shaft uh, quite a bit. Let me go ahead and plug this in so you can see how it runs. Hear how it runs, I should say. What I do like about this is that higher speeds, it's, it's just as noisy as a Dremel, but at lower speeds, it's actually quite smooth. So we have a little switch down. We know if we have it up, we're just not going to be able to turn it on. So we flip that switch down. We know the spindle is uh, able to freely move. And this is advertised as a three-speed, 12,000, 24,000, 30,000 RPM. The difference is, <laughs> is that they just have a very strong detent between low, medium, and high. But this dial is actually continuously variable. And I always thought that was a little frustrating. Uh, the strong detents 
is so you don't accidentally bump it. But I'm going to do a video where I modify this dial so it doesn't have that detent. Uh, so it's because I'm more interested in, in being able to have infinite variable versus just three speeds where it's a detent based three speeds in a hand string rotary dial. So we have it on the lowest speed, 12,000 RPM. And then the medium, 24,000. And it is really quiet, especially on low speed. It's really nice. And I'll show you how it truly is variable speed. And so that's why I'm going to modify the detent in this switch because it's just annoying to have a continuous variable speed capability and then to have a strong detent that just prevents you from really using it effectively. Oh, I also forgot to mention it is, uh, I did mention this RTX 3S, but it's rated at 2 amps, surprisingly enough. And that is one thing I was going to mention is even though the motor's not, you can't replace the brushes. Um, uh, it's easily as powerful as any Dremel. Actually, most Dremels are rated for 1.15 amps. Uh, so this unit is definitely as strong, if not stronger, than many other Dremels. And when I do the actual operational comparison of all the rotary tools, we'll be able to see it in action. Anyway, I'm going to follow up with a quick video, kind of yeah, heavily edited, just taking it apart, showing inside and modifying the switch to follow up this video. And then I'll be continuing on with my various Dremel review and comparisons. Actually, the comparison will be later, but reviewing different uh, Dremel motory, rotary tools over the years. I, anyway, end of this video, and I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.